moment enjoy best plays. But first, they invented radio, developed color TV, and are responsible for two-dimension motion pictures for nervous people who faint from fright in three-dimension movies. Who are they? Why, Bob and Ray, of course. And every weekday night, you'll enjoy their antics over these stations. The boys join such other great weekday shows as Bob Hope, Dave Garraway, One Man's Family, and NBC's award-winning News of the World. Yes, each weekday, NBC brings you the best in music, comedy, drama, and news. Now it's Best Plays on NBC. From New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays with John Chapman. drama selected from the outstanding successes of the New York stage. Now John Chapman, drama critic of the New York Daily News, is here to introduce Geraldine Page and Richard Kiley in Summer and Smoke by Tennessee Williams. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Thank you. Our play has had an interesting career. Summer and Smoke was first produced by Margot Jones in her Theater in the Round in Dallas. Then she brought it up to Broadway, where it had a moderate run of 100 performances. Later, this work by Tennessee Williams went back to another Theater in the Round in Greenwich Village, where it had an amazing run of one year. Much of this new success was due to the acting. An unheard of young woman, Geraldine Page, was giving a luminous performance as the maidenly music teacher. Later this season, Miss Page came uptown into a comedy titled Midsummer, and the professional Broadwayites, uh, Broadwayites hailed her as a new star. This week, a poll of drama critics put her in a tie with Oscar-winning Shirley Booth as the season's best actress. So, now we're going to have what I might call a theater-in-the-ear performance of Summer and Smoke, and we're happy to have Miss Page in our company. Happy, too, to have Richard Kiley as young Dr. John Buchanan. Imagine now that we're in the fancifully named town of Glorious Hill, Mississippi. Here we first encounter a Mrs. Bassett, who is a town gossip. Mrs. Bassett, what do you know? I'll tell you, somebody used to have a pretty voice, and that was Miss Alma Winemiller. Of course, she doesn't sing anymore, but back before the First World War, in all of Glorious Hill, Mississippi, there was nobody could sing like Miss Alma. I remember one Fourth of July, she sang at a band concert they had down at the park. Kind of nervous little thing, Miss Alma was. Remember that day after she finished singing, how scared she looked when she came off the stage and looked around for her father and that poor old mother of hers. Here we are, Alma. Where is the ice cream man? Her mother, Hustler. Alma, here we are over here. Oh, Father, my fingers have just frozen stiff. Oh, I don't know what came over me. Absolute panic. Oh, never, never, never again. As long as I live, it isn't worth it. The talk is that I go through. You're having one of your nervous attacks. Oh, my heart's beating so. It seemed to be in my throat the whole time. Was it was just noticeable, Father. You sang extremely well, Alma. <sighs> But you know how I feel about your singing in public. Well, I don't see how anybody could object to my singing at a patriotic occasion. Where is the ice cream man? Uh, Mother, there isn't any ice cream man. No, 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 there isn't any ice cream man, Mother. But on the way home, I will stop by the drugstore and pick up a pint of ice cream. Well, Mother, uh, we'll run along now. Uh, Don't stay out late, daughter. No, Father. Uh, This way, this way, Mother. Come along. Strawberry, Alma. Chocolate? Chocolate and strawberry, Miss. All right. Not vanilla. Yes, yes, Mother. Vanilla. Evening, Miss Alma. Oh, good evening. I enjoyed your singing. Why, thank you. Uh, Are you home for the summer? Yep. Are you planning to stay here and take over some of your father's medical practice? I haven't made up my mind about anything yet. Oh, I hope so. (laughs) I mean, we all hope so. Your father is so proud of you and so pleased over your accomplishments. The last time I was in his office, you should have heard him singing your praises, telling me how you graduated magna cum laude from Johns Hopkins. Uh, That's in Boston, isn't it? Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore. Baltimore, man. Well, it's such a beautiful combination of names. And uh, I've been told that Johns Hopkins is the finest medical school in the world. Practically. (laughs) 
Oh, it must be a great satisfaction to you to be standing on the threshold of a career in such a noble profession as I think medicine is. I didn't know you had such a high regard for the medical profession. <laughs> well, I am a great admirer of your father's as well as the patient. And, oh, it's such comfort knowing that he's right next door, almost within arm's reach, as it were. <laughs> Why, do you have fits? <laughs> fits? Well, no, 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 no. But I uh, do have attacks <laughs> of our nervous heart trouble, which seems so mm. alarming that I run straight to your father, and he always reassures me. <laughs> you know the trouble with you, Miss Elm. Hmm? It isn't nervous heart trouble at all. Well, what is it, then? You have a doppelganger. Oh, my goodness. And the doppelganger is badly irritated. An irritated doppelganger? Mm-hmm. Oh, for that sound. Well, I shouldn't have said anything. I'm not your doctor. <laughs> Who's that? Well, I'm surprised that you don't know. I've been away quite a while. Well, that is the Gonzales girl. Mm-hmm. Her father is the owner of the gambling casino on Moon Lake. <laughs> well, what can she be laughing about? Maybe she thinks we're funny. I hope that you have a strong character. Solid rock. Mm. The uh, pyrotechnical display is blazing fine. The what? The fireworks. Oh. oh. Uh, I suppose you've lost touch with most of your old friends here? Yeah. Well, you must make some new ones. Now, uh, I belong to a little group that meets every Wednesday, and, oh, I do think you would enjoy them, too. They are young people with intellectual interests. Oh, I see. You must come. Uh, sometime. I'll remind you of it. Thanks. Goodbye, Nellie. Bye. Oh, well, now, here comes one of my adorable little vocal pupils. She's the youngest one and the prettiest one with the least gift for music. Oh, I know that one. Hello there, Nellie dear. Oh, Miss Alma, uh, you were so beautiful and then you cried. Oh, now, it's sweet of you to kill so, but I find terrible. <laughs> You're just being modest, Miss oh. Alma. Hello, Dr. George. Hello. Uh, that book you gave me is too full of long words. Look them up in the dictionary, Nellie. I did, but you know how dictionaries are. You look up one long word, it gives you another. You look up that one, it gives you the long word you looked up in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming over tomorrow for you to explain it all to me. Good night. Good night, Good night, Nellie. Nellie. Well, what book was she talking about? Oh, a book I gave her about, about the facts of nature. Oh. Hmm. She came over to the office and told me her mother wouldn't tell her anything, and she had to know because she's fallen in love. <laughs> well, well, the cautious little eon. Hmm. What sort of mother has she? Oh, Mrs. Ewell is the merry widow of Gloria Hill. They say that she goes to the depot to meet every train in order to make the acquaintance of the traveling salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you laugh that way? What way? <laughs> that way. <laughs> oh, well, now, I do declare you haven't changed in the slightest. It used to delight you to embarrass me, and it's still dark. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't tell you this, but I heard an imitation of you at the party. I? Mm-hmm. I? Well, what did they imitate? You sing in the voice that breathes or Eden at a wedding. Well, how mystifying. Oh, well. Shouldn't have told you. You're upset about it. No, no, no. I'm not in the least upset. I'm just mystified. I'm always mystified by unprovoked malice in people. You know, I wonder if these people who do these unkind imitations of me ever stop to think that I've had certain difficulties to cope with, which may be partly the cause of these uh, peculiarities of mine, which they find so often. And they know that my father and I have had a certain cross to bear. You mean your mother? Well, she had her breakdown while I was still in high school. And from that time on, I've had to manage the rectory and uh, take over the duties that would ordinarily belong to a minister's wife, not his daughter. And I, well, that may have made me seem strange to some of my more critical contemporaries. Well, in a way, it may have deprived me of my youth. Let her go out with young people. <laughs> I am not a recluse. Oh, it's true I don't go flying around here and there giving unkind imitations of other people at parties. Being a minister's daughter, I have to be more selective than most girls about the society I keep, but I do go out now and then. Well, I've seen you out, but it's always with somebody like this Roger Doremus. Oh. You may feel that you can speak that way. After all, you were born with surgeon's fingers. You have a chance to serve humanity, but what do you do about it? Everything you can to alienate the confidence of nice people who love and respect your father. 
driving her automobile at a reckless speed from one disorderly roadhouse to another. Well, what are you thinking of, John? You, be, you behave like an overgrown schoolboy who wants to be known as the wildest fellow in town. And I call that, I call it a desecration. Miss Alma, you know that I really like you. Oh, no. No, you don't. Sure. A lot. How'd you like to go riding? In your automobile? Uh-huh. Well, would, uh, would you uh, observe the speed limit? Oh, strictly with you, Miss Alma. Why, why then, I'd be glad to. John. Golly sure. Moses. Oh, my. Well, hello, Roger. Well, how'd it go, Miss Alma? Uh, how did what go? Uh, my solo on the baritone horn. Oh, I paid no attention to it. Oh. Oh, well, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Doremus, uh, this is Dr. John Buchanan, Jr. Oh. How to do, I'm sure. Well? And Dr. Buchanan has just graduated magna cum laude from Johns Hopkins University. Oh, uh. That's New York, isn't it? Baltimore. <laughs> oh, there's that awful Gonzalez girl. Such a raucous laugh. Yes, indeed. I think we'd better go. Uh, John, will you walk back with us to the rectory? Mm. Oh, I, I think I'll just stick around here, thanks. Oh, well, good night, then. Uh, good night. Uh, good night. Miss Alma, I would put you above that kind of thing. What kind of thing? Looking back to see what those two are doing. What are they doing? She's gone over to her. Well, maybe he knows her. Well, he didn't. He does now. They're walking away together. I guess if anybody really knew Miss Alma, it was old Dr. Buchanan, young John's father... He was the best doctor we ever had in this community, and everybody thought the world and all of him. People would just drop in and talk to him whether they were sick or not, especially Miss Alma. Doctor, I don't think I will be able to get through the summer. Oh, you get through it, Alma. How? How, Dr. John? Well, one day you'll come after another, and one night you'll come after another, till the sooner or later the summer will be all through it. And then it'll be fall, and you'll be saying... I don't see how I'm going to get through the fall. Mm -hmm. Dr. John, there is someone who wants me to marry him. Who is the young man, Miss Alma? His name is Roger Dorena. Oh. Well, why do you say that? Now, please say what you think. Well, I think he's a very nice young man. Well, then what is your specific objection to him? Uh, what are yours? Well, I have none. Then what are we talking about, Miss Alma? Well, my objection to him is just that I, well, I don't love him, and I cannot imagine myself... Making uh, love to him. Oh, Dr. John. Well? Well, well yes, I suppose that's it. Oh, Dr. John, suppose I get left high and dry with no one, no body. Now, look at here, Miss Alma. You've got to ask yourself whether or not the physical side of marriage means anything to you. A gentlemanly fella, abstemious and easygoing, is all some women look for. On the other hand, there are some women who want to love and be loved with passion. Now, which are you? Well, I believe in the possibility of a deep love between a man and a woman. Good. A physical love? Well, with me, it cannot be based on a physical passion. I think a very term is somewhat unpleasant. It, uh, forgive me for using it. But uh, naturally, marriage leads to our contact and embraces. Yes. And I just don't see how I ever could with Roger. Well, it even offends me when he touches my hand in spite of all the respect that I do have for him and even affection. Has and... anyone ever touched you? I mean your hand without creating this uh, distasteful feeling. Oh, yes. I'm not a cold person. Johnny! Johnny! Oh, where is John? I haven't seen him lately. The last I heard, my son was taking part in what is called a floating crap game. Oh, dear. Well, when do you expect him back? When he has lost his shirt, socks and tie, and the belt to his trousers. Well, when he comes back, uh, I wish you would remind him of something to me. 
all about a month ago. <laughs> he said that he would take me riding some afternoon in his uh, automobile, but he seems to have forgotten all about it. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to remind him yourself. When he comes back, he'll find his belongings moved to the Alhambra Hotel. There's no place in my house for wasters, drunkards, and lecherers. Oh, now, why do you say lecherers? He spends his nights at the Gonzalez place out on the lake. He isn't fit for you to associate with, Alma, as your father told you a long now, time ago. Now, now, you have got to be patient with him because he is young and he's confused. Yes, we've all of us got to be patient at least until the end of summer. And if we can go that far, well, then we can go much further. And somewhere, sometime, there must be some revelation. A visit of some angel to straighten things up for us. Well, how will we know this angel, Miss Alma? John. Oh. Hello, Dad. You will find your things at the Alhambra Hotel. Uh, that's the way you want it. Oh, don't you be too severe with him. Go upstairs and wash and shave and put on a clean shirt of mine. Okay, that's the way you want it. Infernal whelp. Hello? Oh, John! Miss Alma? Uh, I have a bone to pick with you, sir. Well, at the time of our last conversation on the uh, 4th of July, well, you said you were going to take me riding in your automobile. Oh, did I say that? Oh, yes, indeed you did, sir. And all these hot afternoons I have been breathlessly waiting and hoping that you would remember that promise. But uh, what I was really calling you about is, is, do you remember my mentioning that little club that I belong to? Oh, yes, Oh, now, 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 don't you call it that. It's just a little informal gathering. And uh, we talk about the new books and uh, read things out loud to each other. Is this an invitation? Oh, well, didn't I promise that I would ask you? And uh, it's going to be tonight at uh, 8 in my house at the rectory, so all you have to do is cross the yard. <laughs> uh, I'll try to make it, Miss Alma. Oh, don't say try, so it requires some Herculean effort. All you have to do is cross the yard. Oh, excuse me, Miss Alma, but Dad's got to use this phone. No, 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 no. I will not hang up until you said you will come without fail. All right, Miss Alma. I'll be there. You can count on it. Hello, Miss Alma. Oh, oh Nellie, where did you come from? <laughs> oh, Miss Alma, something marvelous has happened. And what is that, Nellie? Well, you know about Mother. Mm -hmm. I was brought up so nobody nice except she would have anything to do with me. Mother's meeting all the trains to pick up traveling salesmen and bring them home to drink and play poker. All of them acting like pigs. Pigs, pigs! Oh, Nellie. Well, I thought I'd always hate men, loathe and despise them. But last night, well, I'd heard them downstairs for hours, but didn't know who it was. When all of a sudden, my door banged open. <laughs> you thought it was the bathroom. Now, Nellie, I'm not sure I want to hear any more of this story. Guess who it was? Well, I couldn't possibly guess. The wonderfulest person in all of a big, wide world. When he saw it was me, he came and sat down on the bed and held my hand. And we talked and talked until Mother came up to see what had happened. You should have heard him bawl her out. He said she ought to send me to a girl's school because she wasn't fit to bring up a daughter. <laughs> then she started to bawl him out. You're a fine one to talk, she said. You're not fit to call yourself a doctor. John Buchanan was with your mother? Oh, he wasn't her beau. He had a girl with him. The mother had somebody else. Who did he have? Oh, some loud, tacky thing with a, a V in her name. Gonzalez. Rosa Gonzalez? Yes, that was it. <gasps> but him. Oh, Miss Alma. He's a wonderful... You know, your mother was right. He is not fit to call himself a doctor. Now, I hate to disillusion you, Nellie, but this most wonderfulest person is pitiably weak. Daddy! Someone's calling him. Daddy! Yes, these people shout his name in front of his house in such a character that the old doctor cannot permit them to come inside the door. All the gifts of the gods were showered on that young man. Daddy! And all he cares about is indulging his senses. Here he comes down the steps. Look. Nellie, come away from that window. <gasps> Look at him jump. Oh, my. Over the banister. Now, don't lean out the window and have us caught spying. 
So, Nellie, how you spy on him? Mother! Oh, she's a good one at spies. Well, you go back to She stands door. behind the curtain and peeks around. Oh, and whenever he comes in at night, she rushes downstairs to watch him out the window. <laughs> Sometimes she sits down here and waits until he oh. comes home. Just sits and waits and watches. Oh, I'm in love with him. That's Mother, be still! <laughs> I'll give you no more. I'll give you no more ice cream either because I am tired of your malice. I am tired of your malice and your self-indulgence. Oh, people wonder why I am tied down here. <laughs> they pity me, thinking me as an old maid already. And I'm young. I am still young. Well, it's just you. You have taken my youth away from me. <laughs> Oh, now, listen here. Don't you ever dare to tell a disgusting lie about me to that girl or anybody else. Everybody noticed the change that came over Miss Alma that summer. The first chance I had to notice it was the night we had our regular monthly literary meeting. Miss Alma had promised us a surprise visitor, and sure enough, she had one. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies, um... Before we begin our meeting tonight, I would like to introduce our guest of honor, Dr. John Buchanan, Jr. Hello, everybody. Well, now, we are all completely assembled. And I believe the first item on the agenda for this evening is... Vernon has his birth play with him tonight. Oh, well, we decided to put that off to colder weather. Yes. Uh, Miss Alma is supposed to read us a paper tonight on William Blake. <laughs> Those dead poets can keep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Mrs. Bassett, everybody. <laughs> now, this is the way I feel about the verse play. Now, it is much too important a thing to be read under any but most ideal circumstances. I mean, not only our atmospheric, on some cool with music planned to go with it. Now, why don't we just have the paper on Blake, and then we can talk... Insane, insane. That man was a mad fanatic. Well, now, Mrs. Bassett... I've been up on him, and I know what I'm talking about. He traveled around with that Frenchman who fired a gun at him in a drunken stupor, oh, no. and later one of them died of TB in a gutter. Oh, 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 no. All right, all right, I'm finished. I won't say anything more. But why was your paper, Miss Alma? If, uh, if you... Well, what's the matter, John? Uh, if you folks will excuse me, I'm afraid I have to leave you. I have to call on a patient. Oh, well, 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 that's too bad. Well, uh, wait, I'll, I will come to the door with you. Oh, no, that's all right, Miss Alma. I'll let myself out. Uh, good night, everybody. Shall we go on uh, with the meeting? I bet I know who the patient was, that Gonzalez girl. His father owns Moon Lake Casino and goes everywhere with a pistol strapped on his belt. Johnny Buchanan will get himself shot in that car. Why, Mrs. Bassett, what gave you such an idea? I don't think John even knows that guy's always good. Mm, those are all right, in the biblical sense of the word, if you'll excuse me. No, I will not excuse you. A thing like that is inexcusable. I think Miss Alma has fallen for the young doctor. They tell me he has lots of new lady pages. You stop that. I won't have malicious talk here. You know you drove him away from this meeting. After I bragged so much about how bright and interesting you all were, you put your worst foot forward, you simpered, you chattered, and carried on like idiots. Idiots! Oh, oh, go go away. Away. All of you, go home! Go home. Father, would you tell me what time it is, please? Five of eight. I'm working on my sermon. Why don't you work in the study? The study is suffocating. So don't disturb me. Father, would there be any chance of getting Mother upstairs if anyone should call? Are you expecting a call? No, 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 I'm not expecting it. Just a chance of it. That boy next door is coming to see us. 
Perhaps he's going to see us. You can't be serious, Alma. He asked me if he might, and I said yes, if he wished to. But it's now after eight, so it doesn't look like he's coming after all. If he does come, you will go upstairs to your room. And I will receive him. If he does come, I will do no such thing, Father. I will receive him myself. I don't judge people by the tongues of gossip. I happen to know that he has been grossly misjudged and misrepresented by a lot of old busybodies who are envious of his youth and his brilliance and his charm. You're not out of your senses. Then I'm out of mine. I dare say we are all a bit peculiar, Father. Well, I have had one almost insufferable cross to bear. Insufferable cross to stop your windbag, Mother. And perhaps I can bear another. But if you think I'm retiring to my study when this young man comes... Probably with a whiskey bottle in one hand and a pair of dice in the other. You have another thing coming. Very well, then. I'll wait outside and meet him there if he comes at all. Alma, have you lost your mind? Oh, no, Father. I think I've just found it. Alma, come back here. <laughs> Alma. <laughs> understand why we have to sit out here in the arbor. Why can't we go into the casino? I am a minister's daughter. That's no reason. We do have doctor. There's a better reason. We can't afford to be seen as that makes any more than I can. Left. Hey, Dusty. Here. Hey, Dusty. Yes, sir. Bottle of vino rosa. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. What you got there? Some sleeping tablets our father gave me. I need one. You want to turn into a dope fiend taking that stuff? I need one. I feel faint. Well, stop swallowing air. You'll get over it. There you are, sir. I'll put it on the tab, Dusty. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, when does the, when's the cockfight start, Dusty? Oh, about 10 o'clock, Dr. Johnny. When does the what start? Well, they have a cockfight here every Saturday night. That's what we came for. I didn't think such exhibitions were legal. This is Moon Lake Casino, where anything goes. And you are a frequent patron? I'd say constant. I'm afraid you must be serious about giving up your medical career. You bet I'm serious about it. Doctor's life is walled in by sickness and misery and death. May I be so presumptuous as to inquire what you will do when you quit? Well, I've been thinking of South America later. I've heard that cantinas are lots more fun than saloons. And senoritas are caviar among females. Those Latins all dream in the sun and indulge their senses. You know who's crowned with most of the glory on this earth? The one who uses his senses to get all he can in the way of satisfaction. Self-satisfaction? What other kind is it? Oh, oh. I will answer that question by asking you one. Have you ever seen a picture of a Gothic cathedral? What about it? How everything reaches up. How everything seems to be straining for something out of the reach of stone or human fingers. The immense uh, stained glass windows and the great arched doors that are five or six times the height of the tallest man and the vaulted ceiling. And all those little delicate spires. All, all reaching up to something beyond attainment. And to me, that is the secret. That is the principal fact of existence, that everlasting struggle and uh, aspiration for more than our human limits to place within our reach. Oh, now, who was it that said that? Um, <clears throat> uh, all of us are in the gutter, but some of us are looking at stars. <laughs> Mr. Oscar Wilde. Oh, well... Regardless of who said it, it is still true. You know, I've only gone out with three young men at all, seriously. And with each one, there was a desert between us. Wide, wide stretches of uninhabitable ground. Of course, none of them ever engaged my serious feelings. You were... Uh... You do have serious feelings of that kind. Well, doesn't everyone sometimes? Some women are cold. Some women are what is called frigid. Do I give that impression? Under the surface, you have a lot of excitement. A great deal more than any other woman I met. Well, of course. The soul. Oh, of the any... soul again. Gothic cathedrals. Your name is Alma, and Alma is Spanish for soul. You know, sometime I'd like to show you a chart of the human anatomy I have in the office. It shows what our insides are like. And maybe you can show me where the beautiful soul is located on that chart. 
Oh, well, come on. The clock fight started. Let's go watch. No. I know something else we could do. Oh. I had heard that you made suggestions like that for girls you go out with, but I was too believe that such stories were true. What made you think that I might be amenable to such a suggestion? That you wanted all along, isn't it? Uh, I'll I want to go home, but I won't go you. I'll go home in a taxi. Boy, boy, call a taxi. I'll call one for you, Miss Alma. You are not a gentleman. Taxi! You are not a gentleman. <laughs> Act Two of Summer and Smoke, starring Geraldine Page and Richard Carley. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Louisville's Radio Center. Every child a camper. This is the 1953 goal of Louisville's 14 resident camps and seven day camps. Camping is recreation and good living in the out of doors. Call your Red Feather Health and Welfare Council, Jackson 2391, for information about Louisville's camps. Your coronation station, WAVE 970, Louisville. Now, Act Two of the Best Plays production of Summer and Smoke. A while after her date with Johnny Buchanan at the Moon Lake Casino, Miss Alma seemed to act more like herself. If she had another date with him, none of us found out about it, and it was commonly thought that something might develop between her and Mr. Roger DeRemus, who came to the rectory more and more often. And this is a photograph of Ceylon, the Pearl of the Orient. And who is that fat young lady? That is Mother in a hunting suit. Oh, well, I'm sorry. What was your mother hunting? Well... <laughs> Heaven only knows what she was hunting, but she found Papa. <laughs> oh, she met your father on this Oriental tour. Yes, yes, he was returning from India with dysentery, and they met on the boat. Oh. Oh, and here, here she is on top of a ruined temple. How did she get up there? Well, climbed up, I suppose. Mm, what an active woman. Oh, yes, yes, active is no word for it. Oh, look, here. Here she is on an elephant's back in Burma. Ah. Uh -huh. You're looking at it upside down, Miss Alma. Oh, oh well, deliberately, just to tease you. Oh, <laughs> oh perhaps that's your mother come to fetch you home. 10.15. I'll never leave till 10.30. The door was unhooked, so I'll just walk in. Why, Mrs. Bassett. I was just wondering who I could turn to when I saw the rectory light, and I thought to myself, Grace Bassett, you trot right over there and talk to Mr. Winemiller. Oh, father has retired. Oh, Alma, we'll just have to wake him. If it isn't too late for human intervention, your father's the one right person to call up old Dr. Buchanan at the fever clinic at Lyon and let him know. About what? Well, not five minutes ago, a friend of mine called to inform me that young Dr. John and Rosa Gonzalez have taken out a license and are going to be married tomorrow. Are you quite certain? I'm always certain before I speak. Well, why would he do such a thing? Oh, August madness. They say it has something to do with the fallen stars. Of course, it might also have something to do with the fact that he lost two or three thousand dollars at the casino, which he can't pay except by giving himself to Gonzalez's daughter. Alma, what are you going to do? Hello? Long distance, please. Hello, hello. Long distance, please get me the fever clinic at Lyons. I want to speak to Dr. John Buchanan. <laughs> Johnny, you have blood on your face. Bit my ears. Turn that music off. No, I like it. Doesn't make love without scratching and biting, Rosa. If I leave you, I have a little blood on me. Why is that? Because I know I can't hold you. Well, tomorrow we leave here together. We sail out of Galveston, don't we? You say it, but I don't believe it. I have the tickets. Two pieces of paper that you can tear in two. Oh, we'll go, all right. We live on fat remittances from your papa. <laughs> You know, not long ago, that idea would have disgusted me. But not now. <laughs> Did anyone ever slide downhill as fast as I have this summer, Rosa Gonzalez? Hey, tell me, why does your papa want me for a son-in-law? 
I want you. I want you. Rosa. In here, Papa. I don't want him coming in this house. Le doy la tierra y si la tierra no va. Sí, sí, Papa. Quieto. Johnny. Happy years. Happy years. Papa, Johnny asks why I want him. Listen. When my girl Rosa was little, she see a string gold bead. And I don't have money to buy string gold bead. So next day I walk in dry goods store, I say to the man, please give me string gold bead. He say, show me the money. And I say, here is the money. And I reach down to my belt and I take out, <laughs> not the money, what is gone. Now I have the money, but I still have this gun. She got the gold bead. Anything that she wants, I get for her with the money. Or this gun. You just stick a breath out of my face. Get a chamaco. What's going on here? Dad. Dad, uh, this is, uh, this is Mr. Gonzalez and his daughter, Rosa. Senor. I know who you are. What is going on in my house? John's giving a party because we're leaving tomorrow. What? Yes, together. I hope you like the idea. But if you don't, it don't matter because we like the idea and my father likes the idea. Guys, the limit. Gonzalez. Get your swine out of my house. Oh, Dad. Dude, that's what I say. Get Dad. your swine out, I say. Get him out. Get him into the place. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. What? Dad. Oh, God. <laughs> Jumble your father's spotting. Oh, tell him to quit. Take him you don't want that life. worn out magic. It is no longer Can't a question of what you want. Of life of a lot. You've got to go in and see him, John. Oh, Amen. You wouldn't want me. It just happened because of his devotion to you. No, it happened because some metal some Maddie called him back here tonight. I called him back. But you can't put the blame on anything but your own weakness. Uh, you white-blooded spinster. Listen, you call me whatever you want, but don't let your father hear your drunken shout. There's something here I want you to see. It's sort of anatomy. Look. I don't want to see that. Oh, how can you behave like this with your father dying? I want you to look at this chart and listen to a lesson in anatomy. You see? Very well, I'm listening. This is a picture of the human body. This upper story is the brain, which is hungry for something called truth. Doesn't get much, but keeps on being hungry. This part here is hungry for food. This part's hungry for love. Because it's sometimes lonesome. I've fed all three. You've fed none. Nothing. Now, well, maybe your belly a little. Watery subsistence. But love, but truth. Nothing but hand-me-down notions. Attitudes. Poses. So that is your high conception of human desire. Well, I reject your opinion of where love is and the kind of truth the brain is seeking. There's something not shown on that chart. Oh, no, you mean the part that Alma's Spanish Yes, told yes, it's not shown on the anatomy chart, but it's there, somewhere, not seen, but there, and it is that that I love you with. Yes, did love you with, John. Did nearly die of when you hurt me. I wouldn't have made love to you. What? That night at the casino. I wouldn't have made love to you. Even if you'd consented, I couldn't have made love to you. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? I'm more afraid of your soul than you're afraid of my body. Because I wouldn't feel decent enough to touch you. more easily now. He wants you out now. I... I... Yes, she... Oh, I couldn't... Uh... Go in and sing to her, Miss Alma. Well, all right. I don't really... Sir? Yes? Do you think I might... Yes, John. Go on in. I think he'll want to see you. John... Death? Death? It's too late, John. Too late. After his father's death, Johnny Buchanan left town and some time passed before it was learned where he had gone off to. 
while he was away, a kind of strangeness came over Miss Alma. She very seldom left the house, and if anybody called at the rectory, they would come away with stories of the funny way she acted and dressed. Is there a parade in town, Father? Haven't you looked at the papers? Well, no. No, not lately. He's finished the work his father started. Sent out the fever. And gotten all of the glory. Well, that's how it is in this world. I'll not come away from that window. Oh, there he is. Then why don't you rush right over? That's what you want to do, isn't it? Oh, that's exactly what I want to do, Father, but I'm afraid someone else has already gone to welcome him home. Oh, that Gonzalez creature. No, no. Here she looked like Nellie Ewell, but... You know that little girl used to be one of my music students? Well, that couldn't be her. What? Nellie is just a child. <laughs> All that fall and early winter, Miss Alma was sick. Nobody knew what she had because she wouldn't see a doctor, nor anybody else for that matter. I'll never forget the first time I saw her after her sickness. It was down in the park just a few days before Christmas of that year. Hello, Alma. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Uh, Bassett. Such wind. Ooh, such wind. Yes, nearly swept me off my feet. I had to sit down for a while to catch my breath. Good to see you out again after your illness. Thank you. Our poor little group broke up after you dropped out. Oh, what a pity. I think next spring we might reorganize. Well, will you look at that? Oh, that's Nellie Yule, isn't it? The image of her mother. Disgusting. Miss Alma, hello there. Oh, hello, Mrs. Bassett. <laughs> Goodbye, Alma. Come to see me. <laughs> What's the matter with that old frump? Nellie. My, how you've grown. I was by the rectory, just popped in for a second. The holidays are so short, but every minute is precious. They told me you'd gone to the park. Yes, this is the first walk I've taken in quite a while. You've been ill? Oh, no, not exactly ill. Just not very well. Oh, how you have grown up, Nellie. <laughs> it's just my clothes. Since I went off to Sophie Newcomb, I picked out my own clothes, Alma. Mm, I'm sure it must be very fashionable to school. Oh, yes. That the time is to be young ladies in society. Hmm. <laughs> what a pity there's no society here to be a young lady in. Uh, you will find out the fields to conquer. What's this I hear about you? Well, I have no idea, Nellie. That you've quit teaching singing and gone into retirement from the world? Well, naturally, I had to stop teaching while I was ill. That is for retiring from the world. Uh, it's more a case of the world retiring from me. I, I brought you something, Alma. It's a Christmas present. Oh, Nellie, you shouldn't have given me anything. Go on, open it. Oh, Nellie, what an exquisite handkerchief. There's a card, too. Oh, yes, so there is. Hmm. <laughs> Joy is Noel to Alma from Nellie. Son of your cannon, Dr. John. He yes. got me that present last night. When we came to yours, we talked about you. Your ears must have burned. You mean he spoke well of me? Well, of I was right. Simply right. Oh, he told me the influence you'd had on him. Influence? He told me about the wonderful talks he'd had with you last summer when he was so mixed up and how you inspired him. And you, more than anyone else, were responsible for his pulling himself together after his father was killed. And he told me about... Where are you going, Miss Alma? I'm going home, Nellie. Uh, you run along and deliver the rest of your presents. But wait, and I told you the most wonderful thing. No, I... no, I'm going home now, Nellie. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Alma. Alma, uh, nice to see you. I called the rectory when I heard you were sick, but uh, your father told me you wouldn't see a doctor. Oh, well, I just needed a rest, that was all. Mm. You were out of town, mostly. Uh, yes, I was mostly in line, finishing up Dad's work in the fever clinic. Covering yourself with sudden glory. 
redeeming myself with good work. Well, it's rather late to tell you how happy I am and also how proud. But, no, you're right. I haven't been well. You see, I've thought many times of something you told me last summer, that I have a doppelganger. And I looked that up, and I found out that it means another person inside me, another self. And I don't know whether to thank you or not for making me conscious of it. For a while, I thought that I was dying. But that was the change I had waited for all summer long. When did you have that feeling? August. September. But now, the gulf wind has blown that feeling away like a cloud of smoke. And I know now that I'm not dying. It isn't going to turn out to be quite that simple. Have you been anxious about your heart again, Miss Alma? Oh, you've gone back to calling me Miss Alma again. We never really got past that point with each other. Oh, yes, we did. We were so close. We almost breathed together. I didn't know that. Is it impossible now? I think I know what you mean. Well, you know what I mean, all right, to be honest with me. One time I said no to something. You may remember the time and all that demented howling from the cockfight. But now I have changed my mind. Oh, well, the, the girl who said no, she doesn't exist anymore. She died last summer, suffocated in smoke from something on fire inside of her. Alma, I have a respect for the truth, and I have a respect for you. So I'd better speak honestly, if you want me to speak. You've won the argument that we had between us. What argument? The one about the anatomy chart. Oh, the chart. It shows that we're not a package of rose leaves, that every interior inch of us is taken up with something ugly and functional. And no room seems to be left for anything else. In there. No. But I've come around to your way of thinking. That something else is in there. An immaterial something, thin as smoke, which all of those ugly machines combine to produce. And that's the whole reason for being. It can't be seen, so it can't be shown on the chart, but it's there just the same. And knowing it's there, within this whole thing, this unfathomable experience of ours, it takes on a whole new value, like some wildly romantic work in a laboratory. Don't you see? Oh, yes, I see. But, you know, you needn't try to comfort me. Now, you... You said let's talk truthfully. Well, then let's do unsparingly truthfully, even shamelessly, then. After all, it is no longer a secret that I love you. It never was. I have loved you as long ago. Well, as long as I can remember. I remember the long afternoons of our childhood when I... And to stay indoors, practice my music. I heard your playmates calling you Johnny. Yo, Johnny. Oh, it went through me just to hear your name called. And I was rushed to the window to see you jump the porch railing. And I stood at a distance halfway down the block, only to keep sight of that torn red sweater as you raced around that vacant lot you played in. Oh, yes. It's begun that early. This affliction of love and it has never let go of me since but kept on growing I have lived next door to you all the days of my life a weak and divided person who stood in adoring awe of your singleness of your strength and well that's my story so I wish you would tell me why didn't it happen between us? Why did I fail? Why did you come almost close enough and no closer? Whenever we've gotten together, it wasn't the physical you that I really wanted. No, you said that already. You didn't have that to give me. Not at that time. You had something else to give. <laughs> what did I have? You couldn't name it. I couldn't recognize it. Oh, I thought it was just a pure...
puritanical ice that glittered like flame. But now I believe it was flame. Mistaken for ice. I, I still don't understand it, but I know it was there. Just as I know that your eyes and your voice are the two most beautiful things I've ever known. And also the warmest. Although they don't seem to be set in your body at all. John, 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 you talk as though my body had ceased to exist for you. Oh, well. Oh, the tables have turned. <laughs> the tables have turned with a vengeance. Someone is coming, John. One of uh, my vocal people. The youngest and the prettiest one with the least gift for music. One that helped to wrap up this handkerchief for me. Johnny. Oh, hello, Miss Alma. Oh, hello, Nana. I've been all over town just shouting. Shouting. Shouting what? Glad tidings. Well, I thought we weren't going to tell anybody for a while. I couldn't stop myself. Oh, Alma, has he told you? Oh, he didn't need to, Nally. I guess. From that Christmas card with your two names written on it. So, Alma, you were really the first to know. I'm proud of that, Nally. See, and more things. This was the present I couldn't tell you about. A solitaire. Oh, but a solitaire is such a wrong name for it. Solitaire means single. And this means two. Well, it's just blinding, Nally. It hurts my eyes. Oh, Alma, I'm so happy. Uh, Alma, you know, you're going to sing at the wedding. The very first Sunday in spring, which will be Palm Sunday. The voice that breathed o'er Eden. Young man. You say something, miss? A train at night makes a lonely sound, don't you think so? Yeah, it sure does. Water in the fountain is cool. Is you thirsty? No, not right now. Uh, even in summer, it keeps cool. It comes from deep underground. That's what keeps it cool. Glorious Hill is famous for its artesian springs. Why well, didn't know that? Oh, didn't you know? Are you a stranger in town? I'm a traveling salesman. Oh, you are salesman. You travel. But I should say you are younger than most of them are. And not so fat. Why don't you start now? Oh, I I, uh, travel for Red Cross shoes. Ah, and the Delta is your territory? From the Peabody Lobby to Catfish Row in Vicksburg. Mm, uh, life of a traveling salesman is interesting. But lonely. You're right about that. Hotel bedrooms are lonely. Well, all rooms are lonely when there's only one... one person. You're tired, aren't you? I can tell from your voice. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> well, yes, a little. But I shall rest now. I have just taken one of my sleeping tablets. So early? Oh, it won't put me to sleep. It'll just, uh, quiet my nerves. <laughs> what are you nervous about? Oh, I won an argument this afternoon. Well, that's nothing to be nervous over. You ought to be nervous if you lost one. Well, it wasn't the argument that I wanted to win. Well, I'm nervous, too. Oh, really? What over? It's my first job, and I'm scared of not making good. Oh, then you must take one of my tablets. Hmm. Oh, shall I? Please take one. Yeah, yeah, I shall. And you'll be surprised how infinitely merciful they are. Well, life is full of little mercies like that. No, no big Comfortable little mercy. And so we go on. on, 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 on. You're falling asleep. Oh, no, 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 I'm not. I'm just closing my eyes. You know what I feel like? No. I feel like a water lily. Oh, a water lily? Yes, indeed. I feel like a water lily on a Chinese lagoon. Why don't you sit down? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, sure, yeah, thanks. My name is Alma. <laughs> that is Spanish for soul. And what is yours? Mine's Archie Kramer. Oh, 
Mucho gusto is the same thing. Usted habla español, señor? Un poquito. Uh, Usted habla español, señorita? Un día. Uh, me también. Un poquito. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes un poquito is plenty. <laughs> 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 yeah. See, what's uh, there to do in this uh, town after dark? Well, uh, there's not much to do in this town after dark. But there are resorts on the lake. That offer all sorts of art and uh, entertainment. There's one called Moon Lake Casino. It's under new management now, but I don't suppose its character has changed much. Well, what, what was its character? Oh, gay, very gay, Mr. Kramer. Well, then what are we sitting here for? Let's go. Why not? I'll call taxi. Yes. Yeah. Hey, taxi! Hey, taxi! You coming? Oh, in a minute. Well, what are you waiting for? I thought someone called my name. Oh, no, that couldn't be. Nobody knows where I am. Come on! Yes, coming. Coming! of Summer and Smoke, starring Geraldine Page and Richard Kiley. And here once more is your host, drama critic John Chapman. A touching drama, don't you agree? And fine performances by Miss Page, Mr. Kiley, and their fellow players. Our thanks to them all. Next week, we are going to try one of those melodramas the English know how to make so well. This one is Barry Lyndon's The Amazing Dr. Quitterhouse. Dr. Quitterhouse is a reputable man who becomes an extremely clever criminal in a spirit of pure psychological research. I think you'll enjoy it. And we'll be pleased to learn that our Dr. Quitterhouse will be the star who created the role on Broadway, Sir Cedric Hardwick. This is Chapman saying goodbye until next week. Tennessee Williams' Summer in Smoke was adapted for radio by Earl Hamner. Heard in the cast were Agnes Young as Mrs. Bassett, Virginia Payne as Mrs. Winemiller, Santos Ortega as Reverend Winemiller, Edwin Jerome as Dr. John Sr., Jane Webb as Nellie, Louis Van Ruten as Gonzalez, Raleigh Bester as Rosa, William Griffiths as Roger Doremus, and Lawson Zerby as Archie Kramer. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. Your announcer is Fred Collins. Sundays here, Theater Guild on NBC. Mm.